are back on Minnesota Sports Live. We have our special guest, and you know it's uh, it's been a while, a little bit of a while. They've been clamoring. The zoners have been clamoring, or excuse me, uh, Alex, I believe his name is, has been clamoring for this guy. He uh, has. Cole yes. Munson, we welcome back to the show, and um, <laughs> yes, we're giving you claps. Yep, it's finally uh, we can finally hear this stuff. So. Cole, welcome back to the show. Uh, you ready to talk some pups or what? I'm always ready to talk pups, Matt. You know that. Um, thank you to my loyal fan base for begging for me back. We've been trying to line this up for a while. Just, uh, you know, schedules are a bit chaotic. So um, finally got it on the books and ready to roll. All right. Well, let's get going because uh, there's a lot to talk about. Um, end of the season for the Wolves. They obviously lose in the first round of the playoffs. Um, a lot of talk about uh, future with Carl Anthony Towns. A lot of talk about um, what they're going to do with Cat uh, and whatnot. Um, Cole, I mean, what's the deal? I mean, what what are we looking at at this this? How do you review the end of the season here? What do you got? So. Just a quick rundown of where they ended up. Uh, they finished 42-40 and 40 after the play-in. Uh, they took the Lakers overtime for the seventh seed, um, ended up losing that game, and got the eighth seed after they won the final playing game. Um, lost in uh, basically a gentleman's sweep to the Nuggets. Uh, they put up a solid fight, but it's just the Nuggets were the Nuggets. Um, you know, I... Yeah, it was a disappointing season at a 42-40 and 40 record. Um, your best or second-best player, depending on who you ask, missed. Uh, I think you only played in 29 games the entirety of the season. Um, yeah. You know, it was it, it was just a rough year injury-wise. It's a rough year trying to get things going. First year of Gobert, um, that took a long time to get up off the ground. Um, I mean... The biggest killer for us, uh, we only finished two games behind the Clippers for the five seed, and I think this is a completely different conversation if you're the five seed going into next year. Um, because, I mean, you're, you're walking in, you're looking at it, and like, well, we were just on the precipice of the top four um, team in the West. Well, if you take a look at who they played and how they ended up playing like against some of the lower-end teams, uh, between the guy, between the five teams that finished with the top five picks, they had a six and ten record, which means they had a losing record against San Antonio, Portland, Charlotte, mm. Detroit, Ooh. Houston. Dang. So, Dang. you know, and if you take Houston out of that, they finished three and nine. They cleaned up against Houston, but that was about the only one that they've cleaned up against. Uh, they. They played horrible against bad teams. Um, and I don't know if that's a coaching issue. I don't know if that's a attention to detail issue. But if you flip, let's say instead of six and ten, you go ten and six, you're at least five seed. And if I remember right, you would be pushing for the four seed. Mm-hmm. So, I mean – Again, you finished two games behind and you had that record against that bad of teams. Cat only played 29 games. Uh, you had the whole D-Lo thing in the middle of the season. Um, you know, it, it, it was a down year, but there was a lot of positive things to go for. Well, you know, I think that deserves a little triangle uh, chime there, just uh, so we can all put that there. Because, I, I mean, I agree with you, Cole, and... Um, there's been a lot of talk about, well, they made that deal for Rudy, and uh, we've had Alex Zapp on here, Valley Sports North reporter, and he's he, he gave his thoughts on that whole Rudy thing too. And um, <laughs> there there's obviously some controversy surrounding Rudy Gobert. So, uh, Cole, what are your thoughts on the whole Rudy experiment uh, uh, so far after one year? What do you got? Uh, we messed up. <laughs> Listen, I try. I tried to put a, uh, a nice. 
<laughs> I am tried to put a nice lighting on what we did this year. That trade is horrible. Um, I mean, yep. it, it's probably going to go down as one of the worst trades in team history, which is saying something. Um, you know, as a team that got basically nothing for Kevin Garnett. But, uh, I mean, there's nothing more to say. He's he's a solid player. He's a solid foundational defensive guy. But the problem is you traded for a 30-year-old that's making 45 ish million dollars for the next about three years um, with no real chance to get out from underneath that contract because, well, who wants to pay – $45 million a year to a guy that can barely catch basketball. So I don't know where you really go from there with that contract. Uh, Tim Connolly's going to have to hit on some young guys. Um, that being said, I, the, the future is not lost. I mean, there's different areas that you can go. Um, unfortunately, I don't know if we're going to hit on this later, but you're going to have to contractually just move Carl Anthony Towns or Rudy Gobert next year. Yeah. Um, it's just contractually speaking, you cannot keep both on the same team and field any sort of team. Yeah. Well, you know, I I feel like at, it, with the Wolves, uh, Voldy, we've talked about this too. The yep. They trade for him, and they're able to. Um, they're they're able to get him on the court, and it just seems like guys maybe not getting along with him, but they are. Some are, some aren't. We all know with D'Angelo Russell that whole deal. Um, yeah. Now, I just I have a hard time thinking the Wolves are gonna just say, you know what, this whole one year experience we're done with them. I just feel like maybe after next season that that would be kind of the thing. I mean, Voldy, wouldn't you agree that? At this point, you got to go at least this year with Gobert and then see what happens after next season. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I, w- I would agree with that, too, especially with the fact that you throw in uh, also the new ownership situation as well that you have faced in front of you, too, because the new ownership group is going to want to take stock of what they have right now and what they can use to move for the future as well to help this team eventually by God, if do something other than just make the playoffs, maybe actually make a run in the playoffs too. But we'll see how that all develops. I think really you have to take a look at which do you think is going to be more valuable after the season, Rudy Gobert or Carl Anthony Towns? Yes, Cats had the issues with injuries as of late, and obviously both have bigger con- bigger contracts that they're going to have to eat. But of the two that you look at, I think Cats is going to be the one that is going to be most – more likely to be eaten as opposed to what uh, Gobert is having right now because of the fact that, well, Cat's still in the prime of his career, if not very, you know, uh, at the very top of his career right now, and he's still going to be worth something as opposed to, as Munson brought off, who wants to pay a guy $45 million a year if he can't even catch a basketball, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think Zappa said that as well, so I think we're all yep. in agreement there. Um, so let's let's move on to this offseason. Uh, Cole, the Wolves have made some uh, re-signings. Our guy, Nas Reed, baby, he's back. I'm pretty stoked about that. You're feeling good. Voldy's feeling good about it, too. Um, but so far, I mean, how would you look at this offseason? Yeah, you re-sign, um, you re-sign Nas Reed, and then you re-sign mm-hmm. Nikhil um, just recently for your deal and whatnot. So how would you rate this off season, the free agency? We'll get into the draft in a second, but uh, how, what, what are your thoughts so far with this off season? Well, so uh, they, they held on to some of their core guys. Um, you know, they, they signed Ant obviously to that massive deal, which I'm sure we'll touch Huge. on it a bit. Um, they re-signed Na, like you said, which, uh, not showed signs last year of being able to be a lockdown defender and hit the occasional three, which is huge yeah. uh, for being like a, a rotational player in the NBA. Um, and then obviously the Nas Reed deal. I love the Nas Reed deal. Uh, the big key there is you need to find him minutes. Um, you can't sign him to that deal and then have him play like 18 minutes, 17 right. minutes um, and just 
you know, waste away on the bench, uh, which means that you're going to need to play two of Cat, Gobert, and Nas Reed for a majority of the game. Um, if you're going to get him those minutes, you need to play two of those three basically all the time. Mm-hmm. So that is going to need to be something that they can figure out and that they can move forward with. Um, jumping over to some of like the other signings that they made. Uh, so they went out and they got Shake Milton, then they went out and got Troy Brown Jr. Now to open up the space to sign those two guys, they had to cut Torian Prince. Um, yeah. Torian Prince. You know, I'm going to miss him. Uh, he was a great, great guy out of the corner. Could play some solid lockdown mm-hmm. defense. It is what it is. Um, but to make room for these guys, they I mean, needed to make that cut. So they brought in Shake Milton. Shake Milton's 27 on a two-year deal, uh, I think $10 million. Um, Career, he's about a 36.5 point or 3.0% shooter. Uh, just last year, he shot 37.8%. So he's above average three-point shooter as a backup, likely to be point guard for us. Um, he takes care of the ball solidly as a backup point guard with a um, two and two-thirds assist to turnover ratio. Um, yeah. And he's, he's going to be a bench scorer off, or for point guards with uh, just being able to provide a scoring punch at times. Um, I I looked it up. He actually has 10 games in his four-year career of 25 or more points. So he'll probably provide you about two, three games a year where he's going to provide you with a large scoring punch and uh, probably win you a game. So okay. for $5 million a year, I'll take that as a backup point guard. Troy Brown Jr., uh, 24-year-old, two-year deal, $4 million a year. You know, it's a, it's a flyer deal. Um Hopefully he hits and can young continue team. off what he did last year. Very young team. Yeah. Um, yeah. He's got, I mean, last year, keep in mind, he played with LeBron. You know, LeBron kind of boosts some of these stats, but he shot 38% from three last year. Uh, that is pretty good as far as rotational wings goes uh, with a 56% true shooting percentage. So overall, he shot efficiently and he was able to hit threes, which is what you're looking for out of that. Um, and I mean, I, I put it on there. He's, he's a young gamble, young gamble, uh, type of move. Um, also a bit of insurance just yeah. in case John Minot and or Wendell Moore don't pan out, which I'm assuming by the end of the year, they'll be eating into his minutes. And then we'll be looking at, he's more of like a depth piece for us. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, off season, I, would you give a, let, let me ask you. What would you give a grade? As of right now, just right now, there's still a lot of offseason to be had. But uh, what grade would you give the Wolves right now in the offseason? Um, with what they had, I'd give them a B. Uh, okay. You know, they, Great they, did a, they did a solid job. Um, I'm not going to say they did great. Uh, you know, Shake Milton is what he is. It's, it's uh, He's a decent backup point guard to have in the league um and then you know troy brown jr very unproven like he's, he hasn't really done anything i i mean it's a great job keeping uh the guys that they have and bringing them back um and i like those moves but really you were hamstrung from being able to really expand this team because you're, you're limited on cap space you're limited on draft capital so yeah, we'll get into the draft here in a second, but I would say overall a B. Okay. Hey, I can live with that. Voldy, can you live with that? B, pretty solid. I could definitely live with a B, considering what they had and what they have to go off of as well. Hey, Bs get degrees last time I checked. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And also, now that we have Shake Milton on the team. <clears throat> Shake. He's got the shakes that'll make you quake, baby. Let's go. <laughs> Longest yard? Anyone? Anyone? Yeah, yeah I'm sure. Love Those it. owners mm-hmm. probably have seen it. But uh, so, with that being said, Cole Ant, he's back, baby. Look, that new deal. We knew it was coming. Thank God. Voldy is praying to God right now, and we're we're very very happy with that. And you know, it's just it's it's great. Boom. So 260 million, I believe, for mm-hmm. five years. 
Um, that's uh, that's a pretty big sum, and uh, this I believe officially puts Ant as the franchise player. Once you say Cole, and do you feel good about yep. the deal? Do you think Ant can be the guy to lead the Wolves to the promised land? Yeah, I mean, you hit it on the head there. He's he's officially no, the number one guy. Um, I'm sorry, Cat, move to the side a little bit. Ants yep. there now. Mm-hmm. Um, he's actually one of three guys to get that deal. Uh, I think Lamelo Ball got it, and then uh, a Tyrese Halliburton also got that deal yeah. this year. Yep. So, um. I mean, it's you, you had to do what you had to do to get it done. I'm glad it's done. Um, it's a huge weight off of our shoulders. Locked in for five years, which is huge uh, with this organization, just being able to have a guy like that playing for our team for the next five years. Um, it's going to be huge. Uh, next step is you got to keep them happy. I mean, yep. it, oh, yeah. You, you, the clock's always ticking on that front. Um, I mean, you've you've seen multiple people get angry and want out and, and demand trades and things like that. You've got to keep them happy. You've got to put a good team around him. If you're competitive, he won't want out. But you need to remain competitive. Um, mm-hmm. So uh, that's the biggest key at this point now. You've got this deal done. You need to build around him. Yep. And... That's the big thing. You mentioned build around him, and I feel like they, with KG, they did that, but then it just didn't pan out. You have Cassell, you have Sprewell, and all that stuff. But now with with Edwards, this it's a little bit, I feel like it's a tad bit different, where you can add more pieces, especially with the young roster that you have. So I, I think there's a lot of growth to be had with this team, and, um, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day, or in this case, the Target Center. Or well, Voldy hasn't burned it to the ground yet, but you know, no, nope. we'll, we'll we'll see when we uh, get to that we'll as see. well. So, uh, Cole, let's let's bring up this draft. Uh, these draft picks. You got Leonard Miller, um, Jalen Clark. These guys are pretty solid defensively. Um, I think there's a lot of um, there, there's a lot of offensive opportunity with Miller as their it seems like Clark wants to kind of be the shutdown guy. And, man, if you got a lot of good defense play, you have Jaden McDaniels, which would be solid, solid, solid. And you mm-hmm. add in Clark, you add in Miller. It's looking pretty good. So what are your thoughts on the two uh, guys that the Wolves drafted? What do you think? Yeah, so Leonard Miller, obviously, uh, he played with Scoot Henderson on that G League Scoot. team. Um, he – a lot of people were saying he was the second best player on that team. Um, He's a very high energy guy, very good defensively, very long, uh, very good finisher on the rim because he's so athletic and long. Um, I have not seen him play a lot, uh, but I've heard from people that a lot of people had him top 15 in this draft class Mm -hmm. and that they were surprised that he fell. So um, I'm going to be tuning in. They got a a G league game here at nine o'clock tonight. So I'll be tuning in to watch him playing that. Um, Jalen Clark, uh, unfortunately, he's out for the entire year this year. Um, he tore something. I think it was either meniscus or ACL or something like that. Yeah. But um, he'll be out for the entirety of the year. But they were saying that going into the year, he was a top, I think, like 20 prospect as far as being drafted before the injury um so getting him in the late second round was a pretty big steal on their part um he is a very good defender um he's one of the top defenders in the class when healthy uh you're you're taking a gamble that he's going to come back as the same athlete and the same defensive capabilities uh as before so you've got two good are good to great defensive prospects um, that you're hoping pan out and can provide some uh, defensive versatility around that young core. Um, and like you said, if, if these two pan out, then you're looking at a pretty good defensive um, foundation there with sure. Jaden and Ann, um, those two. Plus, don't forget Wendell Moore and Josh Minot. Uh, those two, I think, over time, uh, you'll start seeing them have a role this year. Uh, I think by the end of the year, those two will be key rotational pieces. So, 
Um, you're starting to build a at least a, a young nucleus. Now, we don't know how good any of these guys will be. You don't know which of these guys have starting opportunities and material. Um, you'll find that out here soon enough. But you at least have options, and you have a foundation. That's good. That's what we want. Options, foundation, that's exactly what they need. Mm -hmm. And because we've seen the dysfunction before, Cole, we've all seen it. And uh, yeah. we don't want to see it again. So, uh, Voldy, let's hit it with uh, rapid fire. All right. So don't let the quality of the video fool you. We are super serious and we're coming fast here with these questions. So Munson, I got a, I got a lot of T-Wolves related rapid fire questions for you. Starting things off as well. We all know how the end of the season turned out, but over under how many rounds could a Rudy Gobert, Kyle Anderson fight last? One round. Kyle Anderson's got him within two minutes. Ooh. Ooh. Nice. I like it. How many ant chair swings could you take before going down? A half a swing. Half a swing. I, I, like, half it. A I like it. If he, like, I like if he pulls up at the end and whacks me in the knee, I'm still going down and I'm screaming for mercy. <laughs> so one half a swing. There you go. I love it. I love it. More likely to happen. The Wolves win the title or Ricky Rubio wins the title? Ricky Rubio wins the title. Stop it. Of course. Of course. He's the GOAT, Callahan. Admit it. <laughs> Best point guard in T-Wolves history. Zim's cussing you out. That's all I got to say. <laughs> Gut reaction answer. Does Kevin Love, K-Love, deserve to get his number retired as a T-Wolf? No. All right. He didn't I make like the it. I like it. Really? He didn't make the Fair playoffs. Enough. Here, here's, here's what can. He had his chance. And he blew it. He had his chance. He really did. Correct. He did. He really did. All right. Uh, upcoming season as well. We're talking here. What's the record for the upcoming season for the Timberwolves? 46 wins. 46 wins. Improvement. I like it. Will they win the in-season tournament coming up out of the Western side? They're grouped with the Kings, Warriors... Um, two teams out east that I don't remember were very good. I'm gonna go with no. I think the okay. Kings come out of that grouping, and um, we we missed the semifinal tournament, but I think we finished second in our grouping. So with those 46 wins, they make the playoffs this year. Correct. I would say, and if they do make. The playoffs, If ahead, they Paul. do make the playoffs as well, how does that tarnish LeBron's legacy? <laughs> well, LeBron's legacy is, uh, is, is already tarnished anyway. It's in the toilet, you know. Hey, that's all I got. <laughs> that's all I got for that player. I got, I, got one, I got one back for you guys. Okay. Okay. LeBron or Jordan? Go. Oh, good Lord. Here we go again. I said it on this show before. This was like three years ago, I think, Voldy. Uh, I, I picked Jordan. And the reason why I picked I, Jordan I is I picked Jordan, because, too. Yeah. I mean, the reason right. why I picked Jordan is because he just – he was I so icon. Not saying LeBron isn't, but I, I feel like yeah. he uh, – there's more – I felt like he was the better basketball player and – he could score. He could play shut down defense. I mean, the guy did it all. So did LeBron. But then again, it's like, well, compare the finals records. Well, it doesn't. Bill Russell, man. I, you know, I, I mean, think you of who that. I want. Who I want in a street fight next to me? Do I want LeBron? Do I want either of them? Absolutely. But do I want LeBron or do I want Jordan? <laughs> to literally knock someone the heck out. And it's going to be Jordan because Jordan's got that dog in him. He will fight until literally there's nothing left to be fought for. LeBron, probably, but at the same time, Jordan Jordan takes the cake all the time. Let me give this to LeBron, though, real, real quick. Just, just real quick. He's done more in the community and creating schools, things Absolutely. like that. I think you got to give LeBron credit where credit's due there. And, you know, people looked at Jordan as this, you know, this just great basketball player. There wasn't really people that hated him that much. That, I mean, not as much as LeBron. 
I mean, let's be honest. I mean, a lot of people do not like LeBron, for instance. So that's how I'd answer that one. Who who would you say? You'd probably say Jordan too, right? Jordan's cool. better than LeBron as far as that goes. Now, if if you're talking yeah. uh if you're talking Voldy's uh fight analogy there. I'm sorry, I love Jordan. Uh, LeBron is 6'8", 260. Yeah. Uh, pure muscle. I mean, the guy, I, I know he's got some soccer flop game in him, but that guy is going to do a lot of damage. A whole lot of damage. I, I feel him. like Jordan at a point would just either pull out a knife or pull out a gun and be like, all right, we're done here, fellas. <laughs> He'll pull we're out done. his golf club. That, that's what he'll exactly. do. Exactly. Yeah. He'll pull out a weapon as some sort and be like, all right, we're done here. With a with a big old cigar in his mouth too. So exactly. That's, oh, that's I got how it'll go for down. You. Oh, I got something for you. <laughs> what right. a what a great way to end this interview. Talking about who would win in a fight, Jordan or LeBron. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Do we got time for one go. quick hitter on this? Yes, right. please go All real right. quick. So, um, I know I mentioned this earlier, but this is worth mentioning again. Uh, keep an eye out for either Rudy Gobert or Carl Anthony Towns to get traded either mid season or at the end of the season this year oh. with the contract situation oh, yeah. that's mm-hmm. coming up. Um, you can't yeah. afford to keep both of them or else you're going to enter into the second apron, which if you don't know what that is, look it up. It is very <laughs> harrowing. Yeah, it basically makes it so you cannot build a team. So quick hitter. I would expect either a Carl Anthony Towns or Rudy Gobert trade and one of them to not be on the team, not this year, but the following year. Well, Cole, hey, thanks for coming on again. I know you've been meaning to come on. We did want to fulfill Alex's wish of having you back on again. I know you guys Mm -hmm. had your little uh, uh, conversation not too long. I think it was a couple episodes ago or whatnot. But uh, I just wanted to keep the zoners happy and make sure that you were on because you say that uh, you have a big fan base and you're trying to win best guess. So we'll see. Uh (laughs) Especially when the season starts. Yeah, <laughs> we'll see. Got to beat out the champs. That's that's the main thing. Mm-hmm. But, uh, Cole, thanks for coming on, and we'll talk to you soon. All right, thanks, Gar- thanks for having me, guys.